Why are people trying to sell you essential oils? Look at this pyramid-shaped list of companies. They're all trying to sell them to you. These companies are not the only ones, though. Lots of people want to sell you essential oils. They are highly concentrated plant extracts. They're made by distilling or pressing parts of plants like flowers, bark, leaves, and roots to capture the essence of their scent and flavor, hence the name essential oils. They've been used historically in perfumery, religious rituals, and more recently in wellness routines that are more goop than good sense. Yes, some oils smell nice. I've been known to put them in diffusers. They can create a pleasant atmosphere. And yes, I have a bottle of sandalwood that masks some of the more objectionable smells coming from the kitchen or den. I would use lemon oil because it smells awesome. But I don't because I love my dogs. Yes, essential oils can poison your pets even when aerosolized. More on that in a second. However, when essential oils are promoted as health treatments, things go from spa day to snake oil real fast. Welcome back to Dad Ruins Everything. Last time I ruined red light therapy. For whatever reason, hardly anyone saw that one. It's one of the better videos though, and it's linked in the corner in case you're curious. Today I ruined the thing that makes your place smell like a medieval apothecary, essential oils. Whether you're diffusing lavender for calm energy, rubbing peppermint on your temples for clarity, or slathering frankincense on your third eye to ward off mercury retrograde, this one's for you. So take a deep breath because that eucalyptus isn't strong enough to detox this nonsense. Let's start with what people think essential oils do. Let's look at the greatest hits of essential oil claims. According to a few million websites, influencers, and your cousin who sells them on Facebook, essential oils relieve stress and anxiety, cure headaches and migraines, treat colds, flus, and sinus infections, kill bacteria and viruses, reduce inflammation, balance hormones, help you sleep, improve memory and focus, cure acne, indigestion, depression, PMS, and cancer? Basically, they're being sold as miracle juice, plant-based cure-alls the WD-40 of wellness. But spoiler alert, almost none of these claims hold up to scientific scrutiny. There are a few essential oils that have shown some potential in very specific settings. Tea tree oil, for example, has antimicrobial properties and can be effective against certain types of bacteria and fungi, in controlled environments, in small doses, and when used topically. Lavender oil has been studied for its relaxing properties. A handful of small studies suggest it might help people with mild anxiety or trouble sleeping. But here's the catch. The effects are mild, inconsistent, and often no better than placebo. Most other essential oils, there's no high quality evidence that they do anything significant. Research is inconclusive, done on animals, or funded by the same companies that sell the oils. Oh, and by the way, the studies that do find some benefit usually involve massive doses, direct application, or encapsulated forms. That's a long way from your essential oil diffuser puffing mist into your living room through an RGB light show. A good rule of thumb would be that you can enjoy the smell of your essential oils, but you shouldn't drink them, bathe in them, or rub them on your baby's gums. If you get some odd sounding advice on how you should use them, you should definitely scrutinize the source. One of the most pervasive myths around essential oils is the idea that they're harmless because they're natural. But you know what else is natural? Arsenic, volcanoes, and grizzly bears. Want to make the argument that being derived from a plant somehow makes a difference? Tell me all about your essential oils of hemlock and poison ivy. Essential oils are highly concentrated chemical compounds. Some are downright toxic in high doses. And even at recommended usage levels, you can experience skin irritation or chemical burns, allergic reactions, Hormone disruption. Yes, lavender and tea tree oil have been linked to abnormal breast development in prepubescent boys. Lung problems, when inhaled too frequently or for too long. Phototoxic reactions, if applied topically or exposed to sunlight. I'm looking at you, citrus oils. Never ingest essential oils unless directed to by a qualified medical professional. Not your yoga teacher, not your friend in an MLM, and not the influencer who feels aligned with nature. Also, I've been told about medical professionals that sell essential oils, online or in person. I feel like this should be obvious, but that medical professional stops practicing in that discipline when they put on their oil dealer hat. I'm not saying that they can't do both, but I'm saying that they shouldn't be doing both at once. Essential oils and pets can be a bad combination. We have six dogs in our house. We also occasionally use diffusers. Because not everyone knows this, I just want to mention that many oils are toxic to animals especially cats and dogs. 
Common offenders include tea tree, eucalyptus, peppermint, citrus, cinnamon, and wintergreen. Diffusing these oils in a closed space can lead to vomiting, lethargy, breathing issues, and even liver failure in pets. If your diffuser makes your dog sneeze and your cat hide under the couch, you're not creating a relaxing atmosphere. As far as your pets are concerned, you're violating the Geneva Protocol. Keep in mind that oil blends can have names that don't really indicate what's in them. And considering that many of these products aren't labeled properly in the first place, just watch for adverse reactions as you start using something new. Check your products and keep your pets safe. Aromatherapy is the use of essential oils through inhalation for therapeutic benefit. That could be relaxation, better sleep, or clearing your sinuses. Can pleasant smells affect your mood? Sure. Olfaction is tied to your limbic system, which is the part of the brain that processes emotions, memory, and mood. But aromatherapy being mood-altering doesn't make it medically therapeutic. There is zero consistent evidence that these oils can cure illness, treat mental health conditions, improve memory, or change hormone levels. At best, it's a temporary mood shift. At worst, it gives people a false sense of security that can delay or replace actual medical treatment. If you disagree, you're welcome to present your compelling, peer-reviewed evidence in the comments below. I'll review anything you write, and I'll retract the whole video if necessary. Considering I did my research for this video though, I'm not holding my breath. You knew this was coming. The biggest names in essential oils, Deuterra, Sensi, and Young Living are multi-level marketing companies. In case you're interested, I have a video linked in the corner that covers MLMs. If you're familiar with these particular MLMs, you will know that their wellness warriors aren't certified aromatherapists or health professionals. They're recruited sellers. They make more money signing up friends and family than they do selling product, and they typically don't have any kind of special training or knowledge of what they're talking about. They pitch oils with names like Calm Mind, Protective Blend, or Hormone Harmony. They make thinly veiled claims about immune support, virus protection, or hormone balancing. They love phrases like therapeutic grade or certified pure, even though those terms are made up. There are no FDA standards for essential oil purity. There's no regulatory body verifying these labels. In fact, the FDA has sent multiple warning letters to these companies over false medical claims, including essential oils marketed as cures for serious diseases that I can't mention on YouTube. Let that sink in. In 2022, the University of Georgia conducted a blind test of 20 essential oil products from popular brands. What did they find? 35% contained synthetic additives, 25% had misidentified plant species, 15% were diluted with cheaper carrier oils, and several had contaminants that would be harmful when inhaled. So, not only might your peppermint oil not help your headache, it might not even be peppermint in the first place. Excellent. You may ask what you're supposed to do if huffing oils isn't going to fix your mind or body. Well, this list is going to sound familiar to anyone that watched the cleanses and detoxes video or the collagen video. You should get sleep, drink water, eat real food, exercise, and get actual medical advice from actual licensed humans. If you're not doing the things on this list, you will almost certainly feel at least a bit better if you start. For anything beyond that, you don't need a $40 oil blend with a handwritten label and spiritual backstory. You need a doctor, or maybe a therapist, or a nap. Essential oils smell nice. That's it. They're not medicine. They're not miracle cures. They're not a substitute for science. They're glorified air fresheners wrapped in pseudoscience and pyramid schemes. And while they can absolutely be part of a calming ritual, it doesn't make them effective treatments for anything. If your peppermint oil is helping your headache, it's probably placebo effect, not plant-based sorcery. And that's okay. Ritual and scent can be calming, just not a cure for real ailments. So I hope essential oils are sufficiently ruined for you, or for someone you're about to forward this to especially the one currently diffusing deep cleanse while telling you it cured their vertigo. If you found this video educational or entertaining, hit that like button, subscribe, and drop the weirdest essential oil claim you've heard in the comments. Bonus points if it crosses over into a previous Dad Ruins topic. Engagement is the way to turn me from a tiny content creator into a slightly less tiny content creator. Thanks and have an awesome smelling day.